Okay. Is it recording on? Okay. It is. Look at that. We are recording. Thank you for asking. So we're going to talk about lubrication and cooling and to some extent engine operation. <clears throat> so first we're going to talk about oil. I'm not. I can see everything just fine. Freeze ray. I was waiting for somebody to say that, but I was kind of hoping it would be under him. Functions of oil. Lipstick taser. You never know when you need it. All right, functions of oil. We've got a lot of functions. Obviously, lubrication. Lubrication and anti wear. If you take the oil out, it will wear very quickly. Um, yeah, so what does the oil have to do? Well, it has to lubricate and provide anti-wear. It's kind of way of looking at it. Um, the oil must also maintain proper viscosity. Uh, it must provide cooling of the engine. It also must clean the engine. Cleaning, it provides corrosion protection. Uh, it provides, it uh, also is a hydraulic fluid, so it provides hydraulic, I wrote hydraulic action, but it acts like a hydraulic fluid. <clears throat> Where is it acting like a hydraulic fluid? Tappets. Tappets, yeah. Hydraulic tappets. What else? I heard it. Variable pitch propellers? Yep. Variable pitch props. Um, it must have thermal stability. And it also seals. Like as in the stability? ring to cylinders. What do you mean by thermal stability? It has to, it can't break down and become useless when it gets hot. Less oily. So, yeah, less oily. The oil can be less oil. Oily. It also must work at low temperatures. It must work at high temperatures. Do they do they make oils that like cool better or like don't? Not that I'm aware of. All right. Let's talk about what is a lubricant. A natural or artificial substance having greasy or oily properties, which can be used to reduce friction, prevent rust or corrosion, which is a little bit redundant from what I just said, but so natural or artificial. So dinosaur or man-made artificial substance. <coughs> substance having greasy Greasy or oily properties. <laughs> you knew I was going to say it. <laughs> well, thank you. No, I don't have to. I feel bad about it. <laughs> so, yes, Tobias's hair is yeah. technically a lubricant at this point. <laughs> My father in law, Don, who I've mentioned before, uh, cool guy. He, he, he kind of, he loves talking lubricants. He, certain things he loves talking about. And lubricants is one of them. And uh, so we have a good time talking about lubricants. And uh, he, you know, he talks about lubricants as being tiny little ball bearings is the way he sees them. And so those little ball bearings have to get and go all through the engine. And you have the little ball bearings get in between your plane bearings and the crankshaft, right? So you have little ball bearings in there because you don't really want those two surfaces ever touching. So the oil has to go in there provide a film around it, which is the little ball bearing. So those two items are never supposed to really touch. And if you think about your cam bearings um, in, that, in the crankcase, there's no 
replaceable bearing. And it's like, wow, there's no replaceable bearing. Does it wear? No, because there's oil in there and it provides a little ball bearing action and so it never actually wears. Same thing really with the cam wiping across those tappets. You know, that's steel on steel rubbing. You'd think that that would just wear, wear out in just a few hours, but no, thanks to that Luber bond, it'll last forever. No, the Luber bond is just there because it, it takes a while for the oil to splash around. So that is one of the things that you tend to start a little bit dry, which is <coughs> unnerving. All right, what do we got here? Types of oils. Cow. Cow. I'll come back and write all this stuff. So types of oils. Well, that would be animal made from? No. No, not made from poop. Animal oil. You've heard of types of oil. Okay, they have, we have animal oil, all right? Made from animals. There's tallow oil. Have you ever heard of tallow oil? Okay, that's made from cow fat, right? I've got um, lard oil. What is lard oil made out of? Huh? Fat? Pig fat, all right. Neat's foot oil. This is all out of an aviation book, by the way. Neat's foot oil. Chicken. Neat's foot. Oh, I see. I like it. He's guessing. Neat's foot. No. Back to my cow. <laughs> Shin bone and feet, but not hooves of cattle. Uh, I'll just show the picture first. Sperm oil. Whale. Do you know why they call it that? Why? Because it looked like that. Nice. That's true. Um, That's awesome. Porpoise oil. That's from a dolphin. Got it right. And of course. What kind of dolphin is that? It's the scariest dolphin ever. Where'd you get that? You showed us on the show. Where'd you get that? Is that a seven gill? And last but not least, we have baby oil, which is made from babies. babies. <laughs> 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 Unwanted babies. Oh, baby. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So we'll do that real quick. So we have uh, where was I? Types of oils. Types of oils. Uh, we had animal. I should have put a picture of the Muppet animal, but I don't know if anybody got that one. Uh, made from animals. You ever see the dead animal truck going down the street? No. Here? Really? The road truck? Um, what if they could call it the um, oh, rendering? Rendering? They go into the rendering plant. Oh yeah. Tallow oil, and that is um, cow fat. Cow fat. We've got lard oil. Lard oil. That was pig fat. Pig fat. In case you care. You know, and really, it's like, why are we talking about this stuff? Well, this is this is what they used in air aircraft, you know? This is all we had for a while. Meat's foot. I know, it's like, man, your plane smells good. It smells like bacon. Yeah, this is what the I quote, this is a quote. Shin bone and feet, but not hooves of cattle. Cows don't have feet. <laughs> I don't know, but this is a quote. Is it not hooves? Not hooves of cattle. Hey, I don't know. Whale. Porpoise. Porpoise oil, obviously porpoises, and then baby oil. I think I had to throw that one in there because it was fun, but that is actually a mineral oil. Mineral oil. It's not made from babies? I know, sorry to say. God, I want to tell you, my daughter, she said the damnedest thing. It was so bad, I would have to stop the recording and tell you. Do it. But it was just... Okay. Yeah. I once right. had a vet tell me there was 
many ways to skin a cat. I'm thinking, why would a vet tell me that? Really? <laughs> Take a, what's your favorite way? <laughs> Okay, talking about animal oil. What about this? Cannot, cannot, that's cannot, be used, be used for internal combustion. Then why did I bring it up, right? So you know not to. For internal combustion. Combustion engines. Because... Because, uh, why because? Because they produce fatty acids at high temperatures. <laughs> fatty acids at high temps. Stuff that will eat away metal. Which is not to say they didn't um, at one point. Also, it is not, not as oily, which is lower coefficient of friction. Has a lower coefficient of friction than mineral. All right, so we have animal, and those are our animal oils. And we have vegetable. It is. You're into veggie tails made from Bob the tomato, made <laughs> from plants. All right, we have, I don't remember what my slides are after this point. I had the baby. All right, we don't need that. Okay, um, castor oil. From? Castor beans. Castor beans are like I do not know. Uh, I have some magic ones if you're interested. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Olive oil. <laughs> Oops. Olive oil. That's a three. Made from? <laughs> this is a funny one. Who, you guys watch, watch Clarkson's Farm? No. I don't know when they would watch it. It was funny. I liked it. On Amazon. Jeremy Clarkson? He has a farm. And he farms a lot of rapeseed oil. So, rapeseed, just like it sounds. <laughs> rapeseed oil, it's actually the, from a plant called the rapeseed. Or, and cottonseed oil. Cottonseed oil. All right, what's wrong with these? They oxidize when exposed to air and cause gummy conditions in the engine. So oxidize, exposed. Did I write this one? I didn't. Also, well, we know... Which one of these do we talk about already being used in, in one of our engines? Castor oil. That's right, and that makes you. Yep. And uh, we're exposed to air and causes gummy conditions. Gummy conditions. Is that at all temperatures or is that just. I don't know. I'm going to guess higher temperatures. Because it's when used in the engine, and that would cause steel to wear rapidly. Now you have to remember, or know, or understand, because you wouldn't remember if you don't know this already. When you talk about older engines, like even the Continental 220 that went on the Boeing Stearmans, the biplane that they used for World War II training. It had a TBO of only 500 hours. I mean, they were just, but at the same time, it didn't have a huge list of mandatory replacement items. It was almost like every 500 hours, take it apart, 
replace on condition and go back and fly. But you're doing this every 500 hours. Yeah. Is the two before steel an accident? Is it cause steel to weigh around? Cause, cause is. Oh. Wait, cause. Causes steel. What did I write? Causes, causes steel. steel. Yeah, I just writing backwards okay. and. No, you're causes steel to wear rapidly. Sorry, talking and writing. Lower coefficient. Lower coefficient of friction. And mineral. 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 All right. So we talked about mineral twice now. So let's talk about mineral. All right, so mineral, that's the good stuff here. Primarily, primarily used in combustion engines. Combustion engines. Can be classified as solid, semi-solid, and fluid. as a solid, semi-solid, and liquid. All right, talk about, s this should have been a subheading, but whatever. What would be a solid? Well, I'm glad you asked. A solid, solid would be, Mica, I don't know what Mica is. Soapstone. Soapstone and graphite. Uh, does not dissipate heat well, which is a huge consideration inside of an engine. So that is mainly used in light lubrication. You know, where do you use graphite all the time? No, oh, lubrication. Door locks. Mainly used in light lubrication. Especially, especially. And freezing is a problem. Freezing is a problem. I have firearms and locks. All right, the semi solid, semi solid. Um, Extremely heavy oils and greases. You know what smell I really hate is gear oil. Oh. That that's worse. <laughs> I'd rather smell like gear oil. I do not like the smell like gear oil. I don't know what it is. Uh, yeah, it has a little no, oil. Oil. Isn't it kind of sulfurous? Does it have, yeah. Is that what it is? You got it's sulfur. Got, it's, it's something about it. It's yeah, that does, now that you say it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I had a Chevy four wheel drive where the front end leaked a lot, and so I was constantly yeah. pumping fluid in there. Ugh. Grease is a mixture, mixture of oil and soap. I know. I'm just telling you what I telling you what they told me. I am not a chemical engineer. So we have oil and I don't even what I don't know what this is. Sodium soap? It's salt soap. Sodium soap. Yeah. For gears and hot running. Gears and hot running. Equipment. Oil and calcium soap. Oh, 
that's soap made from milk. I'm making that up. <coughs> For cup grease, and to be honest with you, I, I rarely ever change the grease in my cup. Um, oil and aluminum. Soap. Ball bearing and high pressure application grease. I'm going to come back to grease in a little bit. Ball bearing and high. Um, it probably should have been, but it's not. So. Yeah, I'm worried that the next one would be. Yeah, we can make that C. It'll work out. Make that C. C. And that could be a little I right there. Little I. Ball bearing and high pressure application grease. All right, then we talk about the fluids. So we had, or liquid. My notes say fluid, but liquid makes more sense. All right, that's our oils, which is where I really wanted to go to. I talk a lot about oils. <clears throat> so as an engine mechanic, you can imagine the number one question I get is, well, how much is my overhaul going to be? Question number two, do I really have to replace that? Question three, <laughs> what's the best oil? We'll talk about that, and I'll give you information, and you can answer that question, or not. I don't know. All right, oils used as a primary lubricant in engines. Used as a primary lub lubricant in engines because and I'm going to put an I but I'm not going to write anything there so I'm going to move over because oh, I'm sorry. really? move over now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that was, a, that was the eye that we were working on. There we go. Uh, because, why, why do we use oil? Well, just because it works, right? It would make sense not to. But we have to cope with reasons. It is easily pumped. Because technically grease would work, right? If we could grease it up and leave it greased, that would be just fine. But you can't pump it around. So easily sprayed. Where, do you, where are we spraying oil? Cooling jets. Cooling jets, right on. Um, absorbs heat. Absorbs heat and dissipates heat quickly. So that's good. Has good cushioning effect, those, those ball bearings. Five, chemical stability at moderately high temperatures. We'll talk about that more. Chemically stable at moderately, moderately high temps. And it also does perform well at lower temp, not too crazy forms well at lower temps. All right, so there's some good things about mineral oil and what we like. Okay, but now let's talk about, I'm going way out here, D. Because C was mineral. mineral. Okay, so we got one other type here. What kind of oil you put in your car? What kind of engine oil? Synthetic. Synthetic? Synthetic. What kind of car? Uh, 
Mazda. Is that what the factory says to use? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> zero, eight. Yeah. Yeah. zero eight. Yeah, o zero W. 20, 20, 20. Yeah, zero W twenty synthetic yeah. mobile one. Yep. So whose car says you have to use mobile one? No one else. Mine does. My wallet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you have a really nice car. <laughs> 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 you didn't get over state. Yeah, that's different. I dumped eighty seven on the hash. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, for those of you, so who uses uh, synthetic, mobile, mobile one? Okay, and you don't, so you're saying your car does not recommend or, or say you have to. So now I'm curious, because that stuff is what, twice as expensive as? Yeah, I like to use mobile one. Depending on your performance, like I put it in my Mustang because it helps it clean it out better and it flows better. I use gas I go to Riley Splinter, dude. I don't even care. I go cheap as cheap as yeah. I like I don't cheap out on, I don't cheap out on the filter. You get, you get yeah, don't get a don't get that yeah. the friend garbage or whatever. Uh, yeah. What do you get? Wix, maybe. Wix? Yeah, okay. Wix, bro. Wix, I don't remember that. So uh, there's no wrong, I'm just I'm just curious, because mobile one's very expensive. And I know the reason why my car uses mobile one is how long do you go between oil changes? Mine goes ten. The car before no. this went twelve to fifteen thousand. Three thousand. So that's that's one of the, the benefits of mineral and why certain manufacturers, I think, want you to use minerals because they're the interval is so long, right? Although somebody once said, a friend of mine said, yeah, that's fantastic. Your oil will last 12,000 miles. Your filter still lasts three. So. <laughs> I, I watch, just for fun, like a lot of like old like car revival stuff like Junkyard and, and, and whatnot. Uh, it, a lot of them will use like a heavy grade, a heavyweight diesel oil when they're when they're rebuilding or, or trying to cough back to life these yeah. seized up motors. Yep. Is there is there kind of a reasoning behind that? They never really explain it. They it's like a solvent. Okay. Yeah, it like eats away at, yeah. uh, at what's inside. Okay. okay. Ever heard of Marvel Mystery Oil? Yes. Okay, yes. it's a solvent. Okay. And so it, it, it cleans things up. It's All right, it's so that's. Full synthetic, it helps clean out too. That's why if you switch too late in your mileage, you actually start leaking more. Syn water. Synthetic. All right, now we talk about that. So, not made, not made from natural crude oil. Crude oil. Um, it is, in fact, and I don't talk much about turbines, widely, widely used in turbine engines. Not piston with a turbocharger, but turbine engines like jets. So when I talk about not using synthetic, that obviously doesn't apply to this. Um, does not does not evaporate. Not that I was aware oil evaporated anyway. I mean, I spilled some on the ground. It's still there. So <laughs> evaporate or break down easily. Um, my favorite part about synthetic does not. not produce produce coke or other deposits all right I have um, too much to write right here coke is the solid residue remaining when the oils undergo severe oxidation and thermal breakdown at extremely high temperatures the higher the temp the harder blacker and more brittle the residual so which is good to know so coke Try and abbreviate that. It's solid residue. Solid residue when oil when oil um, undergoes. Yeah, I should just wrote that. Um, severe uh, severe oxidation, thermal breakdown. Um, severe. Yeah, I'm just gonna abbreviate that. Solid residue. Who said that? From over from yeah, solid residue from overheat or from high temp. From high temp, there we go. Uh, the higher the temp, higher 
the tip. The harder, blacker, and more brittle the residue. The harder, blacker, not that color matters, and more brittle. Um, <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah, so what, what, what's this change subject? What's going on here? So we saw that coat caked on the intake valve. Yeah. He said it was a radial engine valve. They happened to be, so they must have got really hot and then oil got on the valve. Um, you absolutely get this coking on the exhaust valves. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, coking events occur because the temperature of the oil, resi oil residue time are both higher than the stability limitations of oil in use. Coke formation events increase dramatically as local metal contact temperatures exceed 300 degrees. So coke happens. Coke happens. Now, does coke happen in synthetic? No. Right. Coke does not produce coke. Now I'm talking about what coke is because we're at that point. It's like, well, it was coke. It doesn't happen. Um, happens at 300 degrees C, which for some reason, not that I'm a big fan of Celsius, but I always tend to remember that, or 572, I was going to say 575, that would have been easier, degrees Fahrenheit. So where are our exhaust valves running? Yeah, close to a thousand. Yeah, so you definitely have coke around there. Bad, bad thing. So you synthetic, you you don't have that problem. Then that eliminates coke, which then what, what happens around the huh? Morning sickness. Morning sickness. Sticky valves. So there we go. Why did you do synthetic? Okay, glad you asked. Uh, full synthetic. Yeah, yeah, two expensive airplane owners. <laughs> Full synthetic was briefly, um, was used briefly in piston engines. So we tried it, but did not perform well. Did not perform well and caused excessive, oops, an E, excessive cylinder wear, cylinder wear. Uh, I don't know if I get into it, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, I get back into it, but uh, there was there was some there was airworthiness directives and lawsuits over it. Wow. Yeah, that's did not. Okay, that's full synthetic. Full synthetic. Okay. Then we have semi-synthetic. What is that? Semi it's almost synthetic, but not quite. Like half, and half. half and a half. Okay. <laughs> or mixture. Semi-synthetic is widely used. It is widely. Widely used in piston in recip aviation engines, which include. I'm going to use a lot of <coughs> name brands of oils. We're going to talk specifics because there's not a lot of you know, cars. I mean, it's like whoa, that's a lot of oils. You don't have these choices in aviation. It's very very limited, and so it starts to make sense to actually talk about the very specific oils because you're kind of expected to know it. 15W50, um, ExxonMobil, ExxonMobil. Two hour uh, engines use semi-synthetic? The ones you're running in the shop? Yeah. Well, if you put it in. <laughs> um, actually, it's, hang on. It's ExxonMobil Aviation. Aviation Oil Elite. Elite. Um, 20W50. Okay. 
There we go. There's your semi-synthetics. Exxon Aviation Elite SAE 20W50. Aeroshell W Oil W15W50. They like that W. WW50. That is a premium semi-synthetic multi-grade for aircraft piston engines advanced anti-wear anti-corrosion formulation. Oil. 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 Uh, let's see. All right. We'll come back to oil a little bit. Let's talk more about what makes up oil and what's a good oil. What are we looking for here? So we'll put point number four. And since it's 820, we can stop right there and come back to it later. So what's the non-synthetic part? Try and be back on time. 